Most modern operating systems have the ability for multiple people to log into them. And along with the ability to have multiple people log into them, you have to have some concept of what are called permissions. Because basically, user A doesn't want user B to be able to see all of their files. So there has to be some way to restrict who can see files and access files and do stuff with them. In the long listing here, I said earlier that we would talk about what this other information is. Well, that is very clearly a date and time. That happens to be the date and time that this file was last modified. Okay. This is how big the file is, you know, measured in bytes. So this is actually a very, very small file, uh, six bytes. The sample file is 137 bytes. The directories are 4,000 bytes. The stuff before that mostly relates to permissions. And you'll notice that all of these say M. Lewis, M. Lewis, and then there's a random assortment of some letters and hyphens up here. Well, it turns out that M. Lewis is me. If you happen to have forgotten who you are on a Linux system, you can ask. You can say, who am I? And it will tell you. Uh, well, in some ways that sounds silly, there actually can be uses. There can be situations where you don't necessarily know what username you're logged in as. A lot of those situations are more advanced types of things. You're a super user on a system and you've actually been changing what user you are. But the command is there. And this first column of M. Lewis's is this. Okay? It is that particular username. The second column is what's called a group. And there is also a command called groups. And groups will tell you all of the groups that you are part of. So my user M. Lewis is not only part of M. Lewis, it's part of ADM, CD-ROM, sudo, dip, plug dev, LP admin, and Samba share. And so I am a member of all of those different groups on this computer. And so if any file has access for any of these groups, then I have access to, to those files. So what about this assortment of letters over on the far left? Well, these are the permissions that are granted for these files. The first letter is either a D or a hyphen. And you can probably tell from this display that D stands for directory because only our two directories have the D. And all regular files will have hyphens. There are nine characters after that, and they're broken into groups of three, where you have RWX or hyphens in their places. So RWX, 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 or the hyphen can replace anything there. R stands for read, W stands for write, and the X, if present, stands for execute. Anything that has a hyphen means that you do that, that particular entity does not have that permission. Why is it repeated three times though? Well, the first set of three here is for the user. So that, that means this column here. So that user has the ability to, on the case of this file, read and write the file. The next group of three is the group permissions. So that's this column. So in this case, it's fairly boring. The group M. Lewis has the ability to read this file, but members of the group, so if there were another user who was in group M. Lewis, but was not user M. Lewis, they would only be able to read the file because they wouldn't be the owner of the file. They would be the group for the file, and the group can only read. And then this third set is what anyone can do, the other users, users who are not the owner and not in the group. In this case, they can read the files. So that gives you a picture of what the permissions are like. How do we change these permissions? Well, for that there is a command called chmod, which is to change the modifiers. Change mod can do more than just permissions. Uh, there are other modifiers on files. We're just going to deal with the permissions at this point. And what I would actually like to do is I don't want other people being able to look at any of these files. So I want to take and extract the read permissions from them. 
So I'm going to do, say, O minus R on star. This, uh, actually there are, once again, multiple ways to use chmod. The way that I'm showing you and the way that I like to do this, you first specify either user, group, owner, or all. And so all would mean that everyone, all these three have the, is, are who you're affecting. It is possible to take away your own rights from a file. Uh, you can make it so that you can't see the contents of a file. You generally don't want to be doing that. Um, user would be, I just want to, to give something to the user that's listed in the first column there. Group or other. And in this case, I want to take away the read rights from other. And you can see now that the R that had been in this column is now gone from all of these files. So these files can only be read now by user M. Lewis or anyone in group M. Lewis. And only user M. Lewis has the ability to write to these files. Okay. What about this X? Okay, the X is for execute. And it turns out that I have written this little file right here happens to be, it's called a .sh because it's a very simple shell script. Let's look at what that file has. It's called myls.sh because it has the contents of the ls command that I normally like to run. Now, I could try to run it, but it says that there's, the command's not found. And the reason is because it's not executable. Well, I want to make it executable. I want to make it so that anyone who's in here, all, has the ability to execute myls.sh. And if I look, now you'll see that x's appeared for the owner, the group, and uh, others. And now I have the ability to run it. You might wonder why I had to put dot slash as a protection so that you can't accidentally run files that you didn't want to. Um, a lot of systems will make it so that the current directory is not part of your path, not part of the things that run by default. And so you have to say files in the current directory in order to, to be able to run it. One last thing here of, I guess there's two things that we want to talk about. In addition to chmod, you can modify the groups for a file. So you can use the ch group command to change what, what group it's in. You can also use ch own to change the ownership of the file. These are two commands that you're probably not going to do much at all unless you happen to be doing system administration. The one that is more useful though is not a full command, but an option, hyphen R. So you might recall for CP and RM, if we had this hyphen lowercase r, which said to do something recursively to an entire directory structure, for chmod and chown and chgroup, it's a hyphen capital R, which does the same thing. So a plus uh, rx on star. This is actually a command I do a fair bit um, what this is going to do is it's going to take all the files in here and because of this hyphen R it's going to recursively including directories go down into them and it's going to give everyone the ability to read and this capital X so if I make this a lowercase all files will be both readable and executable the capital X says only make the directories executable and the reason for that is it turns out that you cannot get into a directory unless you can both read it and execute it. So this will open it back up and make it so that everyone has read and execute directories or execute privileges on directories and just read privileges on the regular files.